They won Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Grammys. There's no red carpet 'cause they're home in their jammies. From Melrose Place to Broadway to Janeway and her crew, let Seth and James bring all the stars to you. Anywho, they're entertaining everyone. So who's gonna grouse? Just sit right back and you'll hear some tales on stars in the. Hey everyone! Oh, Yuma. We'll talk about that in a moment. <laughs> yes, we will. Okay, before we start, I'm James Wesley. This is Seth Rudetsky. Yes, we're married, and yes, we know our Wi-Fi is bad. We have bad Wi-Fi. We're it's out of just, sync. Whatever. We just tried literally. How many computers? We, did we, no, we tried three. We tried three, three different computers. We don't know what's going on. Ethernet, Wi-Fi, it ain't working. But this show is not about us today. It's about our friends from Pippin. And, and the actors, the actors fun. fun. Describe how people can um, donate to that. Yes, um, of course we're not on our big screen, and I'm and I don't have the uh, my glasses. <laughs> we're gonna try to read this. Go to actors. No, go ahead. We're going. Uh, of course, this is for the actors' fun. No, no, no. But here's the thing: we've raised, thanks to our viewers, so far four hundred and forty-six thousand two hundred and seventy dollars for the actors' fund. Basically, every time we talk to Andrea, she says, "How much money have you raised?" So, Andrea, that's our latest total: four hundred and forty-six thousand. Yeah. Wow. So like, Please God, are you over four hundred thousand yet? Yes, yes we, we are. are. Us. So, guys, here's, so if you don't know, the actors fund is a misnomer. It's not just for actors; it's for anybody that performs, but also anyone that's behind the scenes, like wig makers, ushers, stage managers, casting directors, and it's not just Broadway, which a lot of people think. It is all across the country. So, obviously, TV and film, but also small regional theaters, community theaters, whoever makes a living as an artist. Which, by the way, no one's really making a living right now. Now, you can go to the Actors Fund and ask for help. You go to actorsfund.org. You say, I can't pay my rent. I can't pay my medical bills. Whatever it is, you go to actorsfund.org. Now, if you can donate some money, and the minimum donation is five bucks, you go to starsinthehouse.com. You donate. Then you're going to have a receipt sent to you. Forward that receipt to donations at starsinthehouse.com. And then one of our artists today will actually read your name and the donations. Charlotte Amboise will do it in a full split. Andrew Martin will do a swinging. Tara will add some <laughs> comedy bits to it. Rachel Bay Jones will belt it. Oh James God. Thomas will add a blimey accent. Oh my okay. gosh. Um, or yes. you can text FUN2020 to 56512. And the same thing. Can yes, you millennials, text fun twenty twenty to five six five one two. Okay, before we it? before we get before we go into it, I um I want to say on our on our website oh, what? Wait, guys, we literally said <laughs> we know the internet's horrible. It's so my mother. Just say so you know you're blurry. <laughs> I know. We began the show by saying that. And believe me, this is like the best it could be out of three computers and trying Ethernet and Wi-Fi. This is the best we could do. Yes. Um, but I just wanted to say real fast, uh, on our on our website, starsinthehouse.com, there is a link for Poll Hero Project. Check them out. They're so great. I really believe these are young students, high school and college, that basically have decided that the best thing to basically save democracy is to, to basically replace the senior citizens that usually work the polls. And so, and 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 so go to well, Poll Hero. Replace them. A lot of senior citizens well, are not, are not doing the it. That's what I mean, because they don't want to get COVID. Or they're nervous. So, so if you know anybody young, aka Miranda, Rachel Bay Jones, <laughs> they can actually get paid for working the polls. And right. it's, you know, they're not really as much at risk if they're very safe with COVID-19. So go to pollhero.org and please help. That's um, right. okay, so we're gonna bring on the Pippin Revival cast from 2013, I think it is. So um it let's welcome not them feel all. that long ago. I know, and I was looking at just photos. Please welcome the comedy stylings of Mr. Terrence Mann. Hi, Terry. Uh, oh my God. God. You guys know each other? <laughs> Can you believe it? I know. Barely know each other, actually. <laughs> um, the more yeah, we know, the less we know. Yeah. James said you couldn't decide whether to do it on two separate computers. And James said, if we have to <laughs> shove our heads onto one computer, then so do you. So right back at you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, then the lovely Rachel Bay Jones, who I'm going to be doing a concert with tomorrow night on the set concert series, the lovely Rachel Bay Jones. Hi, Rach. Hi. Hi. Uh, your internet's amazing. Your lighting is great. Terry and Charlotte, your passive progress will be shining lights into the computer. We'll talk about that privately. Okay. Thank you. Put that back on. No, that's worth. Put it back on. Oh. Which light would it be? <laughs> Those over there. Okay. Get back really? to me. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> Can we do this off camera? <laughs> what have you been doing for the last 15 minutes? There before you go. Nah. Thank you. And then someone whose lighting is always stunning, phenomenal makeup is 
down. You don't want to do it. Hi. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Rachel. Hi, Karen. Proud weather. We're literally not, putting Terry and Charlotte on you. Right now. What'd you say, Andrea? You're not blurry right now. You're not insane. Oh, no. not. Sorry. Yay. Amazing. And then, hello, hold on. <laughs> Mr. Matthew James Knighted Thomas. <laughs> there he is. Hi, Matthew. Hi. Okay, wait, where is Hi. everybody? So, Terry and Charlotte, where are you guys? Long Island? In like Montauk or somewhere? Where are you? We're at Shelter Island. Shelter Which Island. Is an Shelter Island. Island. Like the scary film with Leonardo DiCaprio in it. No, that's Shutter Island. Oh, <laughs> what did you say? Shutter Island. We're on Shelter <laughs> Island. Sorry, Terry, what was that? That's I can't uh, we're on You're Shelter so Island. It's so oh bad. Terry, I can't hear it. Can't hear it? What? Can you really not? Sure, you can hear it. Uh, when I tried to okay. I'm messing with you. Okay, what's really fun is that if people talk at the same time, <laughs> no one hears anything. So that was a full minute <laughs> of complete, unintelligible <laughs> silence. Okay, Rachel Bay Jones, you're in Los Angeles. Andrea Martin, you're in Toronto. Matthew J. Thomas, are you in Coxswain or are you in Leicester Square? I'm, I'm in Chicago. <laughs> oh, Chicago? <laughs> All right. Chicago. That's no, awesome. I love it. Hello. Um, Hello. Oh, I was literally in shock when I met Matthew. I had zero idea he was British. When did you become British? What? <laughs> I had no Thank idea. You. Uh, okay, so we are celebrating. Andrew, lift your face a little bit because your name is being covered up. Your The name is covering up your face. Lift it. Lift it. Pretend oh, you're in class. Yeah. There you go. What am I supposed to do? That's much, oh. that's much better. Wait a minute, where's Matthew? I didn't hear where he was. Chicago. Uh, Chicago, why are you there? I'm just here with a friend visiting. Okay. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> okay, we're gonna go back to the beginning. We, I wanna know how everyone got their roles. Terrence Mann, I saw you play Charlemagne in a one night concert and you were so effing hilarious, like 2008 or something. And the then, how, yeah, for the Actors oh. Fund. And then how did you get the Broadway show? No auditions, you just gave them the, the Big Max tape? <laughs> no, 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 no. I had to go, I, I, they, they said, my agent called me up and said, you wanna go audition for Pippin? It's going up oh. to Cambridge and maybe it'll come in to Broadway, we don't know. And I said, no. And then, uh, you know, we. And I go, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. And then, anyway, we talked about it. And of course, I went in. And it was Diane. It was a show. I had done the Actors Fund. So, you know, it was like, yes. So I went in and auditioned. And, um, and the first thing they asked me after I auditioned was, um, is Charlotte around? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And so they kind of, I don't know, went after talking to her. Well, and then, so then I had, I um, will continue on because we, <laughs> we ended up doing the audition together. You auditioned though, you definitely auditioned. Then they said, and then I, right. I got, I had turned down the audition actually too, because I don't know. <laughs> because you think, turned down every audition. I do, I turned down every audition. So <laughs> I, I turned down that one. And <laughs> then they, so Fran Weisler called me after they saw you and she said, darling, darling, oh, wouldn't it be fabulous? You should come in for this part. Mind you, not offer it to me, you know, even though I've done, I don't know how many Broadway shows with them, but that's all right. <laughs> but come in and audition and, which, you know, of course is like, you know, you're not gonna get it when they do that. I've done that so many times. <laughs> but anyway, will you come in and audition and we'll have so much fun in Cambridge. We'll bring all the kids and da 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 da. And you and Terry can play husband and wife. So she talked me into it. And then Terry and I went in together and, and I remember Patina was there at yep. that audition, the final callback. Mm -hmm. Rachel, you were not there. You were probably already cast and Matthew came later. So it was just the Patina went in, I remember. And then we went in afterwards and then we read the scenes together. I sang the song. I, I also danced. I, I, she made up a dance. I, well, I always make up a dance, but but I also <laughs> asked them to dance because I always know that that clinches it for me. So even like, you know, but it doesn't matter anyway. I danced and then we sang and, and uh, did our scenes. Now the rest is history. And that was it. We got it. And the next thing you know, this happened. Word. <laughs> Charlotte, Crazy woman. Was, Charlotte and Terry, was that for the work? Wasn't there a workshop first before Cambridge? 
Yes. We did a workshop that went, we went to Cambridge to do the workshop. It was only two okay. weeks. Yes. And that was like a dog and pony show to raise money for ART to like it to, to say, we're going to do this. And, and do we have ideas? So they, I remember, I mean, Andrea, I still remember you and I, because I, you know, they gave us nothing. We just had, they, they gave us, they just said, take the stage and just make it work. Yeah. I just do. make it work. Yeah. So we, I'm like, I don't know what to do. I have this whole song, you know, which ended up getting cut, but I had so many verses and I was just like running around. What stage. song was that? Spread a little sunshine. Like I had to do the whole song. Just running nothing. around the stage. Like making shit up, like yeah. an audition. So yeah, yeah. You sang Love Song with Matthew. Right. Or no, with him, with Matthew. Yeah. No, they Matthew wasn't there yet. And they put Wars of Signs together. And Andrea, mm -hmm. the, you just did your you just did your charm and self, sold the shit out of the song. I no remember. trapeze. No trapeze. And and we literally did a dog and pony show, kind of. I just remember like just kids, just make this work. Make it work. So we all just kind of made it work and then they got the money behind it. And then, so that was that, that was the two weeks, right? We were there. Mm -hmm. I, I remember that time as being like full of like people trying to get me to do cartwheels and somersaults and I dancing. Bet. They made me learn, they made everybody learn. Uh, oh God, the Manson trio. I had to learn the Manson trio. The <laughs> day? We all had to right? stand in the back of it. Didn't we all learn that? Maybe. I, maybe. It's like they were working choreography and um, and acrobatics and seeing how they could integrate that and then figuring out which one of us could do what. And it ended up that I could do none of the things, like zero. <laughs> but I think that was the last time I did a cartwheel. Yeah, you did ride a bike at one point. A little miniature bike that you got injured on. Right. That's Dave. It that tore up your knee. Or no, your, your hip. hip. Your hip. My hip. They did Riding get that. Yeah. yeah. Little bicycle. Yeah. Yeah. And Matthew, it. it was so bad that Matthew had to hold me up during Love Song once. So I'll never, <laughs> never forget that. He's Wait, so why did you get injured on a bike? A little it was bike. a tiny clown bike, okay? It was a very small bike. That was all you could do. <laughs> She was a clown. Oh, yeah. She played the clown before she became what's your name of the show? She, she Catherine. Was the, <laughs> Catherine. She was a clown that kind of wandered through the show with no purpose, <laughs> except that she, she wrote a tiny bike on. She made purpose. She made purpose. You know, actually, you're. We were just looking at the opening number from the Tony Awards, and I literally just noticed you, Rachel, in the like front. literally at five minutes to late. I was like, we're looking through the clips. I knew you were the clown, but I never knew you were in the front row here. Everybody look at Rachel as the clown. Who the hell knew you were featured in the opening I, number? I love it. Isn't it right? I, oh, no, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. Oh, there that's it is. my body. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that yeah, long no. Oh, no. So special. Go, Rach. Okay, so, <laughs> how did you get the gig? Were you living in the States? No, I was, uh, yeah, I was here. Yeah, I was doing Spider Man at the time. And sort of the same story. I said no. And then Luther Creek, my friend uh, in the show, dragged me into my dressing room by my ear and told me that if I didn't audition for this, he'd kill me. Why did you say no? It's literally the title role of a show. What's happening? I, I don't know. Because uh, I'm an actor, I just say no. It's the same same deal. You just say no. That's what you do. <laughs> Apparently, that's the key. That's the key. So he told me all about the second act, and he said, "You kill your dad." And I was like, "Great!" I didn't know it was going to be Terrence Mann, which turned out to be even more fun. <laughs> but wait, when you say you were in Spider Man, were you were you doing all the crazy gymnastics? Yeah. Yeah. We did all, all of that stuff. Well, there, you know, there were 12 other stunt Spider-Man as well, but we did a lot of them. It was it was nuts. It was crazy, but it was so fun. Oh, there's a great book about it, Song of Spider-Man, about the making of Spider-Man. Yeah, it's book. yeah, it's brilliant. It's an amazing book. It's so interesting. All right, so Andrew Martin, everyone said no to the audition. You called Diane and you begged for an audition. Am I correct? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Diane called me and I, what, what happened? I guess they offered me the part and then Diane called me and, and, and I, you know, didn't want to do the part because I didn't think, I didn't like the part the way it really was. Just a little old grandmother in it. Yeah, yeah. And no, I'm not doing it. And then I talked to her and told her what I, what I'd like to do. And, the, and there you go. The rest is history. What do you mean what you'd like to do? What does that mean? Well, you know, listen, the, the part was originally like a little a cameo part and kind of a stunt casting. And I wasn't interested in that. And, and, um, uh, you know, I literally, I, I, so my agent called me and said they want to um, offer you this and Diane will call you tomorrow. And I, and I listened to the score and I thought, gosh, I don't want to do this. But that night I really, I dreamt about what it could be. And I thought that um, it could be kind of transformative for somebody older and that she was in the circus also. And that it, um, as opposed to being a joke about getting older, that it would be impactful for an audience watching it. And um, especially for me, since I was that age. So the next day I talked to Diane, but with her, I wish I could be this confident every job I, I get offered, but I really knew that I didn't, I, I wasn't interested in doing it how it was envisioned to begin with. So I felt very confident saying, this is what, how I see it. If you don't see it, I completely get it. But I just want you to know this is how I see it. And she said, let's do it. Let's, let's do what you want to do. So, it, you know, it was um, collaborative from the very beginning. A part of the appeal for you was also the circus aspect and working the trapeze, right? Yeah. Well, uh, that came later though, right? No, I can't remember because when we first did the workshop, I don't think there was that much talk of, of specificity of what it would be. But once it, once we did the, we were going to um, ART, then I started researching what a traditional circus um, performance would be. And Gypsy Snyder, the um, circus choreographer said, um, I think a stationary trapeze is very traditional. Cause I didn't want it to be like, silks or like Cirque du Soleil, I want to be like old school. And so mm -hmm. then I went to circus school and studied and the best shape I've ever been in. It's so sad what's become of me during the pandemic. When I see myself, <laughs> I, I can't even go on because now I'm actually too old to play the part. Thank you. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Andrea, what, what memory does this bring back? Take, check out the outfit and the book. Oh my God! Yeah, that wow! I remember oh that God. picture. That's so great! I can't believe you love that picture. That's oh yeah. There <laughs> was also that subtext of you and Fastrada having the affair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. That's uh, the, um, the end, right? That, that picture. picture. I love what? that picture. I don't have that picture. I want that picture. I'll send it to you. Yeah, I took it backstage with you guys. All uh, right, so Rachel B. Jones. How did, oh, you were in hair with Dan Paulus. That's kind of how yeah. you got connected, right? But the yeah. role of Catherine usually is much younger. So how did that happen? <laughs> well, um, Diane asked me to audition and I said, no, <laughs> I guess that's the way. You guys, I didn't know that we all had this in common. I think this is the key to Diane's heart is to turn her ass down. <laughs> of course, all I'd ever done was like ensemble roles and understudying. So I don't know where I got the chutzpah to do that, but, um, yeah, I did, because I thought, there's no way. I was 40 or something at the time, and I thought, no way am I going to be playing, you know, an ingenue. Nobody needs to see that. <laughs> so, um, but then, you know, they asked again, and uh, I thought, oh, you're dumb to turn down a Broadway, you know, potential Broadway audition. And so I think, like Andrea was talking about it, it um, I thought about how, how I could make it work with my actual age, because I didn't want to pretend to be, 24. That was not going to fly for me. It would be miserable for everybody else. <laughs> It'd be like, oh, how embarrassing. Um, but it was, so it was kind of great because I think like you were talking about, Andrea, that, that the, the whole idea of the show within a show and this, so it was the actress who was playing this young part that was too young for her. And what, what I certainly know what that's about. And so everything kind of built on that. And um, when, 
they asked me if there's something that I would want to do in the first act, you know, they wanted me to be part of the show all along. And I asked if I could be a clown and that was really a lot of fun. <laughs> Mostly because I can't do any of the acrobatic tricks. <laughs> Would you rather just had act one off to be on like a, you know, like Facebook? Yeah, I'm a little dumb that way. Then that was, you know, then I thought like later when I was riding the tiny clown bike for the 900th time, I thought that was really stupid. <laughs> I should have. Thank you. Yeah. Well, speaking of idiotic choices, Matthew, you're so amazing, but why all the high notes? Weren't you like, what was I thinking in rehearsal? There's so many high A's. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what I would, do. <laughs> I would get to the I would get to the theater about two hours before every show and warm up. Rachel even came over. The, I remember you coming across the stage, being like, "You don't have to warm up so hard, honey." And I like, <laughs> but I do because I have to belt that note in in the audition for uh, the, like three or four into the auditions, like the fourth callback. I stopped at the end of corner of the sky and I said, "Stephen, why do I sing this high note?" I don't, and, and everyone was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I just blew it. That's it, I'm done. Um, and then and then he, he told me it was just elation. You're just you're jumping and it made sense. And so I had to, then I had to go every night. That was what it was, but it starts the show. So I felt like I just had to be in that, like, you know, the, the main number right at the top of the, right at the top of the thing. So it was, it was tough. Did you have like a matinee B. Arthur version? <laughs> well, we found this clip. You're sounding amazing. Take a look. Eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free. Gotta find my corner of the sky. That sweater they made me wear. That <laughs> I love that sweater. Chain mail. Uh, <laughs> we had about 25 different versions of that thing. Do you remember I would change almost every night? Yeah. I would be a new thing. I'd be like, I don't know. What is it? What's wrong with me? You just can't. Like, <laughs> you I outfit? remember when at the Tonys, I was like, I can't believe he has to open the show by going through the audience and singing. That took so much courage. Really? Uh, it was so now, fun, though. It was so yeah. fun. Was it? You were nervous? Yeah, I was so terrified, but weirdly calm. Like, you know, when you have that, when it's just like, well, everything is on the line. And wow. it, it was just, you, you have to step up. It was fun. It well, was that's fun. usually when I crumble. Oh, yeah, Rachel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, so, want you to crumble all the time. You're just so bad at everything. Oh, my God. And best of voice ever. Terry Mann, I was watching clips. You did Wars of Science with the puppets always? Yes, we did. We did silly puppets. We did stupid things. Yeah. Oh my it's God. It's so funny. You have such a funny physicality with it. I'm just like obsessed with your weird physicality. When yes. you say victory here, just watch. What are you trying I just, to say, Jeff? What are you trying to say? say? I'm trying to say that I think Charlotte, well, we'll talk privately. We're going to take a look at the galley. The army of the enemy is stationed on the hill, so we've got to pull them down here where they're easier to kill. You and I repeat, that's the area I agree. We'll move across the plane where you play the galley scene. The enemy in blue will end up in deep pursuit, and we hope to keep our losses to comparatively few. Kill the blues, kill the blues, kill the blues! Victory! <laughs> <laughs> I, I I remember the day we were trying to put the number together and Diane Paulus just said, so Terry, just just, just go up there and, and do whatever you want to do and just, you know, and so I started doing things like throwing canes to, to, to uh, Yannick up on the thing and screaming at people and I would lay down on the ground and try to run like a bicycle laying oh, on yeah, the ground that. and... <laughs> I don't, I don't know. And then we, we kind of, I don't know. And then I had Matthew just to beat up on most of the time, you know, and we were there and I was beating up on him. And then um, um, I remember dying, we got the map out there. And said, well, what are we going to do with the map? And I said, I don't know. What do you want to do? I mean, I, and we tried things where I put it on my head or the girls would like 
draw. I don't know. And then Diane said, well, you know what? There's this really horrible idea. Maybe we could do puppets. And I went, horrible idea. What a great idea. Let's do puppets. <laughs> so we did, uh, we did, we, and we went away from it for a minute and tried to do something else. And I was, I was spent. I was tired and sweaty and I wanted to go home and have a cocktail. And um, I said, let's just put the puppets in. She says, oh, you want to do the puppets? I went, yeah. Yeah. So that's how that evolved. Yeah. It really it worked, man. Yeah. It was a little I mean, and the rest of it is just, uh, I don't know where it comes from, Seth. <laughs> it's such good comedy. I, I'm obsessed with your Gee, comedy, Terry. It well. was hours of them going over and over, of Terry just coming up with a different idea every every minute. And um, I sat there in that audience, like I was off and I just sat there at ART and I watched you stage that oh. whole thing. And you, he was writhing when, when the freaking map came out, Terry was like, are you kidding me with this map? And he was, he ended up like rolling around on the map. He's like, I don't know what the <laughs> heck to do with this map. The map. <laughs> <laughs> it was the map. I would go the map again. And yeah, what, didn't you also, and I remember you limping around because didn't you have meniscus surgery also uh, at the same time that you were like creating this? Part? I can't believe it. Well, on our first day of, thank you for bringing that up. I mean, it's a short Our first day of rehearsal was right after Hurricane, what was that? Katrina? No. That what was, we were rehearsing downtown. Oh, yes. In that studio downtown on 14th oh, Street, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, it was theater downtown. And I was practicing my unicycle out in the lobby, uh, and um, and I uh, fell and tore my medial meniscus. Oh my god! Oh. And was out of rehearsal for the first ten days. Went and had surgery on it, and then rehabbed it. And then about 10, 12 days after that, I was back in rehearsal because I had a fabulous doctor. Um, Phil Bauman, Dr. Phil Bauman. I mean, oh my God, saved my life. And then I was there back in rehearsal, uh, riding, the unicycle. riding the unicycle. Yeah. And, uh, amazing. Crazy. Really amazing. Luck, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I was going to say, speaking of amazing, when we were looking for clips, because you know how much we love this production of Pippin and all of you in it, and definitely saw it more than once, saw it several times. But I didn't, I had not seen the Macy's Thanksgiving Day clip. How cold was it? And Charlotte, with your costume, describe it. We have the clip, but my God. I, I, yeah. No, it was ridiculous. We were freezing. <laughs> I don't even remember New York ever being that cold. That cold. day was hell. Plus, we were up at, you know, five o'clock in the morning yeah. there. You know? yeah. the it was torture. It was bad for me, but it was actually worse for some of them, like, um, exactly. yeah. who were naked. You know, Orion. Orion, Orion had a little shorts on and that's and it. And nothing. So um, it I was, think he liked it. But we had our coat, you know, every second we'd grab our coats and then we'd turn them off. And then, you know, once those cameras go on, we you're on, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, Get it on. Matthew crawling through <laughs> that crowd of people in the stands there. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> in the sweater. Yeah, amazing. Sweater. It was not just the cold, though. I was also scared for like all the acrobatic stuff happening when it's just like hard concrete on the ground. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're amazing, the acrobats, and they really um, always don't do anything they don't feel like they can do. Mm. You know, they, they'll say no. You know, I mean, they'll work their asses off and they won't miss a show, but they'll modify if they have to. Yeah, so they really they know, they really know how to play it safe and rehearse and. They really were amazing. Uh, I learned so much from them, the way they handled themselves, really. Um, yeah. Never missed a show. Never missed a show, you know, with broken backs. They, they, were, they were legitimate. They were actual acrobats from, what was it? Not the Cirque du Soleil. What were they from? The other one. They had a company in France together then, but they all met studying in Montreal. Uh, but we're not Cirque du Soleil. It was a circus school there. And you know what, guys? Um, Lolita's having another baby in a couple of months. Oh my God. Oh. Oh, that, yeah. little, that little bad little body. That little, tiny little girl. So she's got Wotan who must, well, he must be six or seven, right? My God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. six, yeah. Unbelievable. 
I love that you still keep in such good touch with them, Andrew. I do. You know, I, I speak to Greg, I uh, email Greg, you know, I went there to see them and their new show and I want to go back and um, yeah, I love them. I, so I do keep in touch with them. Yeah. Uh, let me know when you go back. Maybe I know. We'll Maybe we'll go. That would be so cool. They will Maybe die we'll and go to heaven. we got all the schedule and everything. We have to I, do it. That I will give we us something to live for. <laughs> I think that would give us something to live for. <laughs> right? Uh, finally. <laughs> this, is, this is you freezing with those brave, brave acrobats. Oh Amazing! Doesn't even look okay. real. It looks after watching that. We need a doctor, so we're going to call Doctor Lapook here for a medical break. But before we do, Rachel Bay Jones, you have your phone with you. We sent you donations to read. We're going to get oh, donations. So everybody, you donated stars in the house. Go to the Actors Fund. Forward your receipt to donations at starsinthehouse.com, and Rachel will put in her readers, or someone else will and read. What's up lately? Let's hear them. Uh, okay. Uh, Kristen from Ohio gave us ten dollars. Ilona, Ilana, Ilona from New York, one hundred and fifty-four dollars. Awesome. Amazing. John from Texas, a hundred dollars, and he says, Seth and James, my pledge to the Actors Fund is to honor the two of you. In your own way, you're allowing many of us to feel connected through the reunion shows you are doing. An added bonus is getting to know the Broadway community in a much more intimate way, while at the same time invoking some great memories. Bravo. Aww. And Lisa from Maryland gave $309. Wow. Nice. I love these, these odd numbers. I think they do that so that they um, so that every dime goes to the actress fund. So in other words, it covers like credit card fees or something. Oh, okay. I think that's what it is. Those are amazing. So, yeah. Thank great. you. Thank you. So great, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Wow, this time. All right, so we're going to take our medical break with Dr. John Lapook. If you guys have any questions, just wave and we'll bring you back. If not, go take a pee break and we'll see you back here in five <laughs> minutes. Bit. Bye, Rachel Bay Jones, Blimey, Andrea Martin, and the couple like us. And Dr. John Pook. Hi guys, how are you? Nice haircut, Dr. John LePook. You know who did this haircut? My wife, Kate Lear. Um, she did a she, very good yes, job. She, yes, she did. She did it off an, an internet uh, video, <laughs> YouTube. And uh, she's pretty good, right? She is. Very impressive. We're, we're, here we go. Thank the you. Back. <laughs> um, Hello. I'm, you, this is an iPhone, so I'm, we're up in Maine on vacation. I didn't want to uh, not be on. So Aww. coming to you from um, beautiful Maine, so it's a little bit of, it's an iPhone rather than, uh, usually it's a MacBook Pro, so it's a little bit, it's a desktop. Um, so, any, so we haven't seen you in two days, so what's, um, any you miss update? Me? Yes, of course. so this, there's actually a little bit of good news. So you might have seen that the number of daily cases are dropping in the United yeah. States, not everywhere. But in general, that's good. Don't be complacent. Yeah, we have to keep it down. Um, interesting, just walking around like a report is my my travel report. Uh, walking in uh, Kinnabun Kinnabunkport today. Uh, everybody, pretty much everybody, was wearing a mask. Thank you. Occasionally, not. It seemed to be guys more than women not wearing the mask. If it was, it was occasionally there was a couple. And the guy wasn't wearing it, and the woman was. Don't get that. But um, in general, very good. And um, I, I was really happy to see that. So uh, especially with the fall coming and yeah. people trying to make uh, plans for how do they get back to school, everybody's got to be doing all these things. I read something super interesting just now about 15 minutes ago. I always like to see what's new in the world on this. In Leipzig, Germany, they're doing an experiment with about 1,500 people. Um, to see whether you can safely, or what would happen if you went back to a concert. You know, to start to actually do the science to say, how does this thing spread? So they had people having electronic trackers. Um, 
they had people wearing fluorescent gel, having fluorescent gel on their hands so that they could see where they touched. Yeah. Well, you know, after the, you know, they, they'll, with a fluorescent light, they'll be able to say, oh, look at that. I didn't, didn't realize that that was an area of high touch. Um, they were all coronavirus negative uh, 48 hours before it was in Leipzig, I believe. And they're going to they're going to study. It's going to take a couple of months. But I love that it's out of the box. It's saying we're going to we're going to try to see how do you think about getting back towards normal, uh, even, you know, maybe before there's total herd immunity. Right. Can you start right. thinking about how this happens? So I love that. I mean, there's a lot of innovation coming up. People are looking at masks. I happen to personally think that the mask technology if that got a lot better, imagine if it was really effective and comfortable and you could sit there in an event wearing a mask, knowing that you weren't relying on the next person to wear the mask, that your mask really significantly protected you. We think it, there may be some protection already, but really was effective. That would be a game changer, right? Absolutely. I mean, you know, we were, we were very impressed, speaking of Stephen Schwartz, with Godspell up at the Berkshire Theater Group because they've really made it work and doing a live performance, doing, doing a live performance. and with it's the outdoors, plexiglass, yeah. it's outdoors, that we were, you know, six, eight feet apart from other people. Everyone had to wear masks. You know, they were yeah. very smart about the arrows in the, for the little bit that you were in the theater, going from the street out to the tent outside, arrows uh -huh. in that direction, they monitored on their phone with an app, how many people were in the building. They were really smart on yeah, how so they can, did it. It can be done, it just, I it think takes work. You got to think about that. And I think I told you, I spoke with one of the theater owners yeah. in New York City. And he said that regional theater will start to come back first. Um, you know, makes sense. With bigger yeah. venues, small, you know, you can control it as opposed to Broadway with the small theaters. But he said that there are architects, because I've spoken to him a, n a couple of times now, nudging oh. him, as we say. Yeah. Um, and he said architects are looking at plans. I don't know what's being done, but hmm. supposedly they're going to get in touch with me next week. And we're going to have a follow-up conversation about this. So I am trying to push for something to be done now while the Broadway theaters are empty to improve the ventilation, yep. as I'm always saying, to maybe make a few more bathrooms for the women, uh, just to improve the airflow. I, I, you know, when you think about the cost benefit, about so you're going to have to spend some bucks, but think about how much money is being lost right now in revenue, not only for the theaters, but for New York City in terms of tourism. Yeah. So I think, you know, you gotta, gotta make an investment here. Well, in past COVID times, it'll help, I'm sure, reduce flu rates. I mean, everything that's airborne. Yeah, that, right, oh, so that's a good, I thank you for reminding me. Everybody out there, get your flu shot because the fall is coming, right? And you don't wanna have with flu season, the confusion of having these kind of symptoms and thinking, you know, is it COVID, is it the flu? Um, and uh, hey, Dr. So Lepre, ahead, hold on for one second, Andrea, I'm going to bring you on because Andrea and I were just having this talk this morning. Andrea, you, Hi, Andrea. you can talk Hi, to Dr. John, Maine is my, you know, I grew up in Portland, Maine. So really? I, I know that I know it so well. I want to get back there so badly, but I'm nervous. Never mind. Listen, um, flu shot. Yes. When's the earliest we should get one? Apparently they're, they're available now in some places and we're just starting to get it in my office. So I would say, go ahead and do it now. There is a theoretical, you know, thing that some people have said um, that, you know, you could get it a little too early because then it will peak and then start to wear off by, but I, I, I don't think that's something that should be a factor. I think go ahead and get it now. Um, it's true that the flu season tends to peak around January, February, that area, but you can have an early flu season and uh, it's going to take several weeks for it to kick in. So go ahead and get it now, get it over with. Who knows? I don't know if they're offering them in Canada. That's interesting. I'll have to check. Really? Yeah. I would say go ahead and get the flu shot now. Okay. And, uh, you know, I read, I read this today from a doctor from LA um, saying that he believes that we should get vaccinated with, I've already had the pneumonia shots, but with um, tetanus and whooping cough and um, that vaccine. Do you agree with that? I wouldn't say that to protect you against coronavirus. I would say oh, you should be totally up to date with all your immunizations because you don't want to have another illness that could give you similar symptoms. Okay. I mean, certainly the pneumonia vaccine is something that, you know, if, if you're in that category, people should go ahead and get it. Uh, Tdap, tetanus, diphtheria, uh, pertussis, 
that should be every 10 years, I believe. And so, to, you know, take a look. People forget about that. And pertussis can wear off. It turns right. out that a lot of the uh, pertussis, that's whooping cough, that kids get, it's really from adults giving it to them. And right. you may have just a little bit of a, of a cough, maybe a little bit of a upper respiratory situation. But remember that your trachea, your breathing pipe, is a lot thick. It's a lot greater diameter than a kid. So when a kid gets that, it's so narrow that it can really give you respiratory problems. Wow. So go okay. ahead and get your Tdap so that you're protecting kids. Great. Thanks. All right. Inside. Thank you, Dr. LaPook. Thank you, Dr. LaPook. Enjoy Maine. Soon. Andrea, vicariously through him. Yes. See you Tuesday. Okay. See you Tuesday. All right. Take care. Right. Bye. Bye. All right. That was amazing. Well, Andrea, that answered that question. Yeah, so good. I love that he's in Maine. Did he say he drove there? I'm pretty sure he did, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, him, he did. All right. Let's That's bring on, bring. Let's bring on everyone clowns. else. Um, the fabulous Rachel Bay Jones. Hi. And Terry Mann and Charlotte. Charlotte flew the coop. That's rude. Where the hell did Charlotte go? She's he here. Ran. She's coming. She's coming. Kind of <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Matthew James Thomas. Hello, call blimey. Oh, God. Hello. Hello, Hello everybody. Hey, guys. <laughs> Guys, right before we went off, I just got a text from Gypsy saying, um, I am cry I'm crying watching. So say hello to her. Hi, Gypsy. Oh, we love you, Tim. Hi, Gyps. Hey, look. Gypsy. Hey, look how beautiful. Oh, cool. look at her. Hey, someone reminded us it's uh, Les Setois de la Man, right? That's the name of the company. Seven Fingers. Yeah, yeah. That's the name of the company. Um, Rachel B. Jones, I just want to talk about, because James and I had never seen you before, and we were so obsessed with your performance in Pippin. Where did you come up with the crazy comedy, just like the eyelash line? Was that an improv? Like, I couldn't get my eyelash on? No, that's a line from the show, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's in there. It was so that's in there. Real. It was really like watching someone in their real life. Like, it was so played brilliantly. The best part, my one of my favorite parts of doing that show was right before that entrance. They, you know, they, like, she gave me all kinds of props and things. And, and I had, I had a big, I asked, they made me a special like crash box and things with like spoons and fishing line and buckets and things that I could clang together to make it seem like I didn't hear my entrance music <laughs> at first. And then the leading player called again and then again. And then I was like, then I was like, oh shit. And then boom, like hit the crash box, go, go, go. Punch, you know, like trying to find my way through the curtain. I mean, it dragged on and on. Diane kind of hated it, <laughs> but I think she loved it a little bit enough or was indulgent just enough to let me continue to do with it. But I would get notes almost every night to like shorten that bit. I remember that. I rem that was so just shorten that. Wait a minute. You mean, Rachel, you mean throughout the run, you would get notes to shorten Oh, yeah. It? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was a little indulgent sometimes. It was fun. It was so much fun because whatever you think of, could, you know, to do, it was just really great. So I would try to poke my way through the curtain, furious, furious, loud banging off stage, and then part the curtain just ever so slowly and like slip back into it like nobody could see me. I was going to sneak on stage, you know, and then whisper it to the leading player like, a, like an excuse, like I couldn't get my eyelash on. <laughs> and then the audience heard me, and I was surprised that they could hear me and embarrassed. Yeah. You know, it was fun. So well, giving away all the secrets. <laughs> but Rachel, I saw that oh, like, it's such a Lucy moment where she's trying to tell you to go backstage, and you just imitate her physicality. <laughs> you know, it's here. Watch this. It is so hilarious. And then your crazy run backstage is so I love Lucy. I love it. <laughs>
Oh, okay, wait, Matthew James Thomas, I gotta go back to your high notes again. Who <laughs> added the crazy high A to Morning Glow? Something I'd never heard before in my life. What was what was the question? You broke up, say it again. So who added the crazy high A to Morning Glow? Something I've never heard in any production. I, I did, I think. Well, it, they, it was it was actually earlier. I can't remember in the actual track. They wanted it to be earlier, and I wanted to save it for the end. I felt like if we put it there, it got you know we you know. So it ended up being at the end. But then in the in the in the on the CD, the album version, we ended up putting it earlier as well. Stephen was like, "Just do it." I was like, "Okay, fine." <laughs> um, so and yeah, it's a great song though. And it's on an eval though. Is here. It's I, I love I love singing high on an eval. That was uh, that was actually good Bono advice. He sings up there on a knee all the time, and he I got that from Spider Man probably. Sonny Bono? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, uh, here's the amazing E, I'm obsessed. It's really infuriating. <laughs> Andrew Martin, did you have a did you have a cushion on the stage at all in case you went plummeting to your death? Did you say me? Yeah, did you have a cushion so you didn't die? Me. <laughs> no, I had Yannick Toma. That's why I didn't die. Aww. Which you didn't you you never requested? Can I just have like a feather bed or something? No. Weren't you scared of heights? Yes. Not this interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's been going really well. Um, I trusted, you know what, look, I, I trusted him. It was really important to me that it was authentic. And I'm so glad Gypsy's watching this because, you know, I, I just I just trusted him. I didn't, I, there was never a discussion of nets or anything like that. I think it just, we just wanted it to be really authentic. And yes, I am really terribly frightened of heights. But when I got into the costume and I was a character and I looked mm -hmm. at Yannick and I forgot about being fearful. But in rehearsals, I was always yeah. nervous because then I wasn't the character. So it wasn't even a matter of Yannick, it, it wasn't a matter of him being not strong enough, it was you being Andrea versus you as the character. Like that's what it took for you not to be scared. In rehearsals? Yeah, yeah. in the rehearsal I was always slightly nervous, but when but when we were actually doing the show, I just, I just you know, I um, just trusted him and I looked in his eyes and um, I just felt secure. I felt we were partners. Mm -hmm. Wow. Man. Yeah, the two of you were so incredible together. And um, Matthew James Thomas, did you ever leave the stage? <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe for a couple of minutes, just ran around the house. So I got to watch Rachel sing, I guess I'll miss the man, right? And then I would just kind of, I was, that was such a fun moment in that show because rarely do you get to be out in the house. And I'd leave her on the stage in that mess and then come around and get to watch her sing that song which was maybe one of the, the best things about doing that show for me. And then have to come back, you know, and then I get to come back. And Terry and Charlotte, have you ever done a Broadway show together? And P.S., will you ever do it again? <laughs> <laughs> we did Jerome Robbins together. And Cats. And Cats. Jerome Robbins and Cats. Right, of course. He replaced I mean, Jason Alexander in, in a... I remember. And Cats. I forgot that whole story. You've never done from a, but you've never done an original cast together. What? You've never, you've never done an original cast together, like no. from rehearsals. No, no, no. That not not like this thing, you know. Yeah. Not like Pippin. Yeah. No. I, no, I was worried. I, I thought, I thought, oh god, we spent so much time together. 
Like at least I could like go to my theater and he can go to his theater and we had some separation. And that was nice. And so I was like, oh my God, we're always gonna be together. But it Tell ended up being surprisingly nice. Right. Because we were never together at the theater because you were always in Andrea's room or Rachel's That's room. True. Missing uh, <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> I missed a lot of entrances. I don't know why. That's yeah. I you never miss entrances ever. And in that show, I was constantly. Oh, oh my god! god. It was always Andrea's fault. You were always in Andrea's room, and you'd hear this. Andrea. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Missing. Oh <laughs> one night, I was actually there. I said. Four minutes later, oh yeah, sorry, I was upstairs. Like not remotely nervous, not upset, just yeah, yeah, okay, and then just went on. Bettina's <laughs> <laughs> just standing on the stage. <laughs> you, would hear this. you would hear, you would hear, uh, Andrea and Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that one night. You remember when we missed the finale, Andrea? For a minute. That was bad. We were both bad, and we were just talking about everybody how they were so unprofessional. <laughs> People were so unprofessional, and then we were so good. That was so funny. That was funny. Oh anyway. my god! What does that mean? Like the show just continues for that minute, and you're just like, there's an empty space and a light there, and you're not there. <laughs> Yeah, pretty think, much. Yep, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. I think yep. somebody else sang my part. Yep, she was supposed to sing her part. We all looked to where she was, and there was a spotlight, and nobody. <laughs> but you could hear us talking on our mics up in the room. <laughs> you could hear it. Complaining you about really the theater and everybody. Oh else. <laughs> I thought oh the show God. was over when I left the stage. <laughs> 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 you know, speaking of solos, James and I were always obsessed with Andrea's Yuma. And Andrea, Andrea claimed it's because the note was too high. But what you would actually hit the high note, but then speak the non high note. Yuma. So it's <laughs> too high. <laughs> I have to kind of build up. I don't know. I don't. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> that was a good one. That's hysterical. That's good yeah. one. <laughs> we say it. We say it in the house about once a week. Oh, yeah, I was going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, I have more. Terrence Mann, again with the physicality, you have such a funny moment with Matthew during Wars of Science where I don't know if you're in a sweet charity. Are you like in a weird sweet charity Fosse pose? Do you know what I'm talking about? Right after you, right after you trip him? I don't know. Okay, I'm showing you. It's coming. <laughs> it's amazing physicality. And by the way, amazing comic timing. Here we go. But we know for success, we must always pay the price. But for my success, you must sacrifice. And then I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I watch that every night. I would oh, watch that so every fun. night. So fun. Oh my God. Cheap and shameless. No. <laughs> so good. Yeah, that was so fun. That show. Hey, you guys, do you remember? Go on. I'm sorry. No, go no. Do you remember? Do you remember our little monologues and stuff we had to do for Diane Paulus before? Mm -hmm. Like our character development. <laughs> Do you remember that? That's the greatest thing, by the way. I know. Oh, you. I, I thought it was. Yeah, it was a little hell for me, but yes, I remember. Because yeah. yours was hilarious, Andrea. You gave birth to a baby doll. An Italian. Remember that? Baby. Black I tried to do that. I, you know, I called Diane. I can't, I, did. I can't even remember what it was, and asked her to re, remind me what what all the steps were, because I thought it was actually. An amazing exercise to find a character. It was. It was. Yeah. Did you ever get I it? I think a lot of what we do. 
what well, we yeah. ended up with came from that, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. And then Matthew, you came later in the company and she made you do it. Remember that? <laughs> you made me dance. We were I didn't dance in my audition. I didn't even know we were gonna dance in the show. There was no yeah. dance, there was no dance call. <laughs> then Jet's like, this is what you're gonna do. I was like, oh I'm dancing. <laughs> okay. But wait, are you a, are you a dancer or are you a gymnast? What are you? No, I grew up that my I grew up dancing. Superhero. My mom has a, a dance school, so I was oh. I was into the ballet for me. So you were fine. Oh, so it was actually good that you got to dance. It was, I think, I mean, Spider-Man was the perfect stepping stone for that because I just done all of that stuff with wires. So this was just actually more dangerous, you know, without wires and just human beings throwing you around. So it was kind of perfect. Was Steven yeah. Schwartz at, at the rehearsals or did he just come to the first preview and at ART? What happened, Andrea? No, no, he was definitely at the rehearsals. He yeah. was, um, you know, he added music for No Time At All, that little music box sequence going up. Mm -hmm. And I, th I don't know, what, did he did he change anything with you guys? Did he, did, he, did he alter any music or, I mean, he was very present. Yeah, very, very present with me. Yeah. I think we worked on the songs, yeah, I mean, all the time. We were yeah, kind of supportive, supportive and um, enthusiastic. And supportive. Yeah. It was a, a very collaborative, creative group was wonderful. And he would give you a lot of permission to move it forward, you know, move exactly. it. Put your own thing into it, yeah. Well, it's it's not surprising that you say that because I think one of the reasons I loved it was because it felt like not a revival, but really a reinvention, right. you know? So, I mean, it makes sense that he was there for to be to help shape it into this new form. That's a good point. Yeah. And the show was so beautiful in that it felt like it was reinventing itself every night. It never... I bet. It was so special, yeah. Every night. What was no, your no. favorite? Thing, what was your favorite thing to do in the show? Any of you oh, guys? The whole show for me. <laughs> I do remember though. Speaking of Terry's physicalities. Do what? Your physicalities. Oh, speaking yeah. of Terry's physicalities. I still remember when I killed you. It was a rowdy audience, and I killed you and dragged you back, and you and you died. I've told the story so many times, and then someone's phone went off in the audience, and you oh. came back to life, and I had to shove you back. Down. <laughs> I was not having it. My favorite thing that's ever happened in my career. That you were in the moment. <laughs> yeah, I, and then I couldn't sing the song. I was like, <laughs> he's like back there. Like, Whoa. You know what was amazing was anytime, and, and Andrea spoke to this a little bit earlier, working with Yannick. Anytime you were working with the uh, with the acrobats, I mean, we that's such a, a, a narrow definition of what these performers are because they are actors they were they were singers they were dancers and they were acrobats and they 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 gave to the storytelling a a, a, a level of, of of magic that did not would not have existed without them and i just remember because you know i've been on i've worked with a lot of folks you know through the years but when you're on stage with these folks and when you were saying let's try this they knew before you finished the sentence or the gesture where you were going and was there with you to either make it funnier or make it clean or make it specific. It was the most exciting yeah. thing, one of the most exciting things uh, I experienced as, a, as an actor with those folks. You and guys, I, I love all of your listeners. The collaboration and also I think because everybody was so perfectly cast and also confident in their roles, you know, um, Rachel and all of you, everybody kind of really knew what they wanted and how they wanted to play these roles. And then it just, and, and Diane Paulus, allowing it and it, it somehow it, it became a magical experience and with the acrobats and everything just making every moment better and better and better and better better and better yeah. which many yeah. often in many shows it's the exact opposite i mean the exact opposite that you deal with and with this show for some reason with the collaborative team for whatever reason it was that experience the whole time it's so present yeah, yeah the stakes were so high I, I still remember an extraordinary climbing over the hearth and every time I would look down at Orion and the eye contact because he was my safety net. Yeah. And if I fell, I'd have broken a lot of bones and yeah. he definitely would have caught me. Yeah. Well, it, it just automatically bonds you as an ensemble because you're all watching out for each other's safety. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it does. Definitely. And such great care was um, given from, you know, different people from from Gypsy and the circus performing and the aspect, and she's the top of her game. And Chet doing the dancing and um, Stephen Schwartz doing the music. Everybody 
I, everybody was so invested, I think, to really make their what they did um, uh, integrated with everybody else. It, it didn't feel like there were egos there. People really yeah. wanted to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I was mentioning favorite moments. Charlotte, my favorite moment was your crazy, amazing layout at the end of your number. Did you love doing that layout? <laughs> Not as Don't much lie. as I love to watch it. <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> Let him know. I, 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 yeah, I did. I mean, that that creative <laughs> was so fun, and my boys in that, my dancers in that, and I, actually, that music was created for that specific dance. Oh, I remember oh, going wow. into a studio, and actually, it was Diane Paulus and the drummer, and me, and Chet, Chet and we kind of just sort of created that music because there was nothing there. It, it was not the original, so um, we sort of just that whole dance and that whole thing was all created on us wow. and the oh, wow. changes happened that wasn't in cambridge that was decided afterwards the quick changes and um yeah and the layout i i remember i i just love that line you know i'm just an ordinary housewife and mother just like all you housewives and mothers out there you know and the dichotomy of that slap and the you know whole thing was just the exact opposite of that i love that so and i'll much. never forget do, do, do you guys do you have film of that because she just she's like i'm just an ordinary housewife and mother and then one day she just she she be, she leans over and she smacks the ground and she just went whack like really vocalized it at the top of her lungs yeah. like this shriek yeah. and it was the most awesome thing i have ever yeah. seen and she, it was, i, it was I so used to whack my hair so hard sometimes you know i'd walk off stage and be bruised it's gonna be like, Fuck. <laughs> it's so aggressive. Here, watch the the layout. The last beat that I'm obsessed with. Here we go. <laughs> So, you know, the other thing I want to say is because I was saying before, so Rachel and I are doing this concert tomorrow night, um, my concert series, and we're doing this song from Pippin, which like I always skipped over. Like the original cast album, I was like, who cares about that song? But you made <laughs> the song so good, um, Ordinary Woman. Like, did you, was, is that the original key? Because it's so belty and amazing. I don't remember it ever sounding like that. I always remember it being really kind of tiny and like sweet and not a big Broadway number. Was that your take on it? It was, yeah, I mean, it, it just seemed to me to be like that whole, you know, the, that the actress is really wanting to have her health of a moment at that moment, you know? <laughs> so, um, and and then uh, we put in the thing where, where I wanted to just hold that note out forever, even when the orchestra cutoff happened and, and that she just really was feeling the glory of all of the love and the big high note, you know? So it was really fun to play against the like, you know, every and every, you know, that whole thing. It was really a lot of fun, so. Hey, Matthew, was it fun being on stage when she sang it? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> That was so great too. Is that like Matthew's so alive? It's just it was never the same way twice with him, and and just to do all of that was he would every t the more annoying I was, the more he would push back against it, and so it was just a constant play. It was all about that. It was all about him that whole that time. That was so fun. It was really great. great. Yeah. Well, let's watch. Here's your alphabet moment. I found it. It's so good. <laughs> Still, I understand. <laughs> If I'm not your kind of woman, anyone can make one terrible mistake. And I've no special lover, no fate I can swirl. <laughs>
Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. Woohoo. Uh, Rachel, did you ever get notes for holding that too long? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. You did. You did. Yeah. Uh, well, it's always, you have to kind of, and sometimes it was too long. Sometimes, like, you would hold it and it was like, oh, it's not funny anymore. Like, I, the expiration date has passed and the audience is done with me. Yeah. You know, you can kind of feel it. The moment went away. Mm -hmm. It's so good, man. Are we doing donations? Yeah, Andrea, I, did you get the donations? I sent you a few more that we oh. that we got in. Oh, I see. Um, let's see here, James. Ah, uh, let me see. Adam from New Jersey, twenty five dollars. Joseph from Illinois, twenty five dollars. Susan from New York, fifty dollars. Jared from California, fifty dollars. And this is from Jared. Seeing the Pippin revival really changed my life. The most I've laughed in my life. I had to go back two more times. I really appreciate everyone taking the time to share the experience of creating this piece. You're all wonderful. It's so exciting to get to relive some of the magic right now. Uh, oh, that's lovely. I agree. You know, one of the cool things is that James and I got to appear on the cast album because remember, Andrea, when you recorded your song, you got like a whole audience to sing along with you. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's were you, right. Were yeah. you guys there? Because James and I were like kind of hidden. And like, were, Terry and Charlotte, were you guys there? It was at a church. No. No, we weren't there. <laughs> it, was, no. it was such a brilliant idea to do that. I mean, you had already recorded the song, right, Andrea? And then we, and then the audience it was like hundreds and hundreds of people that were there. That big day. church. That was great. I can't remember. I certainly remember that evening. I mean, I remember singing at the church, and I think. I think people, because they wanted to be there because they could be on the cast album. That's right. Yeah. But I don't remember. I don't remember the. Hold on. I think we have the clip. Where's the yeah. clip? Oh, there it is. Uh, uh, right there, of course, for no time. Everybody, oh, it's time to start living. Time to take a little from the world we're given. Time to take Wow. So that was Diane yeah. and Stephen Schwartz. Yeah. That's amazing. Stephen Schwartz playing. Um, all right, so Cass, you're going to get a big surprise. We work with Andrea Martin on her technology, and she's going to share something with us. Oh, my God. I'm scared, <laughs> but let's Don't be scared. I'm going to take us off, and you just talk to the cast. Oi. Wait. Oh, my God. Hold on. <laughs> Don't <laughs> worry. No, 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 wait. How much time do we have? You're ah. We can chat. So um, Andrea's setting up. She has to set up her iTunes on her computer. That's why she's in a panic. Okay, wait a minute. Now I don't see it. Uh-oh. You'll oh. find it up. By the way, Andrea Martin is the person who called us and said she'd written a novel and she deleted oh, the entire thing. Andrea Martin deleted her entire novel and she was <laughs> joking and she actually did. And only because James happened to save it weirdly on a, on a flash drive. We saved the novel, but she literally had done the thing that people fear that never actually happens. She deleted the entire thing. So we were, while she was in tech for act one, we were the there play. at the center in her dressing room looking for the whole book on my flash drive. Yeah. Okay. Who does if something? I like forget that? anything, somebody please shout out the lyrics. Okay, good luck. When you are as old as I, my dear, and I hope that you never are, you will woefully wonder why, my dear, through your cataracts and catar, you could squander away or sequester a drop of a precious year. For when your best days are yester, the rest are twice as dear. What good is a field on a fine summer night If you sit all alone with the weeds Or a succulent pear if with each juicy bite You spit out your teeth with the seeds Before it's too late, stop trying to wait For fortune and fate you're secure of For there's one thing to be sure of, mate There's nothing to be sure of Oh, 
It's time to start living. Time to take a little from the world we're given. Time to take time for spring will turn to fall in just no time at all. Now I never wondered if I was afraid when there was a to eat and I never thought about how much I weighed when there was still one cake to eat. Well maybe I meant ah this where are the lyrics but I hey everybody oh it's time it's time to take a little from the world we're given. Time to take time for spring will turn to fall in just no time at all. Oh my God. Sages tweet that ages sweet good deeds and good work earn you laurels. But what could make you feel more obsolete than being noted for your morals? Give me a man who is handsome and strong, someone who's stalwart and steady. Give me a night that's romantic and long, then give me a month to get ready. Well, I could waylay some aging away and persuade him to play in some cranny. But it's hard to believe I'm being led astray by a man who calls me Granny. Everybody! Oh, it's time to start living. Time to take a little from the world we're given. Time to take time for spring will turn to fall in just no time at all. Siege of the sads begins. I throw these regal shoulders back and let these <laughs> Till I die. living time to keep taking from the world you're given you are my time so i'll throw off my shawl and watching your flings be flung all over makes me feel young all over in just no time at all oh, <laughs> I can't believe I forgot those lyrics. Wow. 
What? Wow. That's my grandma. Wow. <laughs> nobody shouted out a lyric. Nobody helped. Just look at it. <laughs> I, Andrea, I promised you, I begged Seth. I said, don't you think we should help her? He's like, no. Sumi. <laughs> You know what threw me? What, what threw me was looking at Matthew actually, mm -hmm. and because you be when I'd done it before, I just looked at it. But I look was looking at Matthew, and I was thinking about the show, and I was thinking, wait, now he's over there on the left side, and I'm singing the, <laughs> the lyrics. So, sorry. Oh, uh, Matthew, what was it like hearing that again? <sighs> You've been opposite uh, for so long. Uh, beautiful. beautiful. I don't know. I'm, I'm speechless, actually. I'm just going to go and cry in a corner somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I, I loved him so much. Every single night, every single night, it was really, really connected. I don't think we ever walked through that at all, ever. No, it was no, extraordinary. No, no, no. It was, you yeah. know, I have to say, Pippin was the happiest time I've ever had in a show. So I'm so grateful to be here with everybody. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> me too. I agree with this viewer. What a treat. This revival was one of the best theatrical experiences in my life. Wonderful performances and direction. I agree. It was one of my favorite theatrical experiences, too. So thank all of you. Uh, thank you, guys. Great thank seeing you. everybody. Matt, you're so lovely to see you again. Terry, uh, yeah. I'm going to come and see you guys in Shelter Island, wherever the hell you are. <laughs> yes. Yes, everybody oh, is. Are everybody. You in York, Rachel? Where are you, Rachel? I'm in California. Oh, my gosh. Okay, honey. Stay yeah. safe. Thanks, Seth and James. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I'll play you guys here. There we okay, go. Show the end credits. All right, I'll do the end credits. <laughs> Thank you guys. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jane, Thank Love you guys. Love you guys. Love you. What I want to do, or where I want to go. Uh, no, what the hell? Uh, no, what the hell's for?